We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Hello, Homo Sapiens, and welcome back to a new video. Today, we're going to ask the big question Can Trump win the 2024 election? But we're also going to look at the 10 most important political events from the past few weeks. I used to do a series similar to this back in December, but I want to redo it. So, welcome to the new version of Catch Up 10. First of all, let's look at Trump's various victories. Basically, certain that Trump has won the Republican primary. To win the nomination of the Republican primary, you need 1,215 delegates, and Trump has about 1,273. All his major candidates dropped out of the race. Vivek dropped out right after the Iowa primary, DeSantis dropped out right before the New Hampshire primary, and Nikki Haley recently just dropped out because she probably realized that she cannot compete with Trump. So Trump is ahead of everyone, he's obviously going to win the nomination, but the massive landslide that he has is insane. The closest person to him is Haley with 94 delegates but she just dropped out so he literally has no competition. You can see this in all of the states that recently reported the results such as in Alabama Trump has an 83% lead, in Alaska he has an 87% lead, in Arkansas he has a 76% lead, in California he has an 80% lead, and in Colorado he has a 63% lead. Now these are all the states that just recently posted the results. So if you look at this on a map you can see that Trump has won basically every state besides Vermont and he lost the District of Columbia. In Vermont it was kind of a close tie but Nikki Haley got a 5% lead and in Washington DC she got a 62% lead compared to Trump's 33%. Now obviously Nikki Haley and everyone else dropped out so it's basically 100% a Trump victory. He has basically no more rivals now. There might be the odd one out, but he has literally no rivals. It's just Trump in the Republican primaries. So I'm pretty confident that he's gonna win. Like, it's very doubtful that he just randomly loses the Republican primaries, like, magically. Another thing that's going to allow Trump to win is that states can no longer ban him from the ballot. In a 9-0 to ruling, the Supreme Court decided that states can no longer ban Trump from the ballot. Previously done by Maine, Colorado, and Illinois, this is the only power Congress should have. Meaning that Trump is officially on the ballot in every state, no state can ban him off the ballot. This is another positive for him because it means his campaign cannot be disrupted by any state or liberal government that goes against his politics. Here's another story that we should talk about because it was very recent. On the 22nd of February, Lake and Riley died in Athens, Georgia to an illegal Venezuelan immigrant. She was only 22 at the time. Now, Biden briefly mentioned her name in the State of the Union. However, he mispronounced her name and he called her Lincoln Riley. It's not about him. It's not about me. I'd be a winner. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. I... Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. That's right. But how many of thousands of people being killed by illegal? Yeah. To her parents, I say, my heart goes out to you having lost children myself. I understand. Her death is basically his fault because Biden's policies are allowing for illegal migrants to enter the country and he's not even taking responsibility for it. He won't even say her name properly. So this all resulted in the Lake and Riley Act being passed in the House. In a 251 to 170 vote, all illegal migrants who come in to commit crimes get detained, hopefully stopping this atrocity from happening again. The 2024 Russian presidential election. It's kind of shocking that Russia even has elections, but Putin just won in a landslide of 88% compared to his rival's 4%. Obviously, Putin's biggest rifle was Alexei Navalny, but he was recently murdered, and previously in 2018, he was barred from the election. And now that Putin's biggest opposition leader is gone, he has basically no rivals, and that's why he was able to win the popular vote with 88%. His biggest rival was a communist, Nikolai Karhitonov, and he only won 4 percent of the popular vote so it's very obvious that putin's gonna win his fifth term reporting is a hundred percent so this is certain he just won his fifth term very legit russia is the most honest country of elections almost as honest as the united states itself 
I recently made a short about this, but the electric car market is a failure. The only electric car maker that is really successful nowadays is Tesla, because Tesla has its own benefits, obviously. Buying a Tesla is cool. You get to have the fucking zero to 60 time that's insanely quick. You get to have autopilot. You get to fucking play video games in your car. There's a reason why people buy Teslas, but they won't buy like a fucking shitbox Volkswagen car. You can see this evidently. Mercedes is canceling its plans. Dodge just released a new gasoline charger, but they said previously it's going to only be electric models nowadays. Due to equity market conditions, Renault is canceling their new electric model, the Ampere. And this is another sign that the electric car market is not where people claim it to be. Now, I don't think the electric car market is going to instantly fucking collapse. It's evident that we can't just instantly switch to electric cars. People aren't convinced yet. People want more range. Consumers want more features. Consumers want a reason to go away from gasoline and go to electric. And that's very evident with all these articles being posted. Andrew Tate just got arrested again. Aiden Ross unintentionally got Andrew arrested and he took full accountability of it on his stream. On his stream, Aiden said a statement that made it sound like Aiden was about to flee Romania. Um, Andrew had hit me up. He said, hey, I'm going to be uh, leaving Romania soon and probably never coming back. If you want to come over and do a week of long streams and content before I leave, I think it'll be big. And it's never. It's. I'm sorry. He said it's not. It's basically now or never. Um, so... You know, and, you know, and, and this is just, I told you guys this year, you know, it's a week of content, right? Um, and again, guys, this might be the last time we ever do this. So it's kind of like, we got to take advantage of it now because, hey, bro, it's, it's, it's just, it's basically like, yeah, it's like that. And the authorities quickly heard that and obviously put a stop to it because Aiden and Tay are really close. So basically whatever Aiden says is probably the truth. So they, you know, they believed it. Tate calls it a matrix attack. That's kind of his usual shtick. I don't even know what to say about it. Let me be real with you. On Monday, both Andrew and Tristan Tate were arrested by Romanian authorities because of charges that originated in the United Kingdom and on the plan that they were going to flee Romania. We don't know what's going to happen next, but that's as far as we know. Donald Trump's former vice president was Mike Pence. In a recent interview with Fox News, he announced that he is not going to endorse Donald Trump. It's kind of a surprise and kind of not because Mike Pence and Trump did have their disagreements. Both of them had their issues, but at the same time, he was Trump's vice president and they were supposed to be a team. So it's kind of weird that he said that he's not going to endorse him, but whatever. And so Pence said that in good conscience, he cannot endorse Trump for his campaign. Now, does this mean anything specifically? It's doubtful. Pence's decision is not going to affect anything. It's a very minor choice by him to announce this. But it's kind of interesting, kind of not. It's just a story. It's just something that he decided to say on the fly. So now some opponents of Trump welcomed Pence's decision, such as a Republican from Illinois, Adam Kissinger, as well as Tommy Vieter, who was an aide to Barack Obama. The TikTok ban. Now, this is probably the biggest and most important story of the month. The House passed a bill that would give ByteDance 165 days to sell TikTok to an American company. The TikTok ban situation has been going on for a while. Back in 2020, Trump tried to ban it during his presidency, but that didn't work out. And now during the Biden presidency, the House was able to agree. The Senate is probably going to agree. And so if Biden gets the bill, he said that he'd sign it into law. And ByteDance is now being given, you know, a few months to decide on what they'll do with TikTok. They have to sell it or they have to like split it up into parts and you know give it to companies They basically just need to stop owning it by dance is a Chinese corporation Meaning that all their data has to go to the CCP that is a threat to national security about 34 states have banned TikTok in government agencies or Contractors so government issued devices cannot use TikTok in 34 states most of these states are Republican run However, there's about like five that are Democrat run and then some that had a bipartisan decision. There's also various universities and schools that also ban the use of TikTok on their computers, like Arizona State University and Texas State University, Purdue University, and Oklahoma State University. There's been more places that have banned TikTok, like Wells Fargo banned it on their company devices, New York City banned it on government-owned devices, but that's about it for now. Will the bill get passed? Most likely, but it might get opposed by the Supreme Court for violating the Constitution. Who knows?
Sweden has officially joined NATO. They became the 32nd member on the 7th of March. Their flag was soon raised in Brussels. So Sweden is now a member after previous opposition from Turkey and Hungary, but both of those sides agreed. And so Sweden is now a member. Putin's invasion of Ukraine caused many countries to want to join NATO, such as Finland recently joined and now Sweden joined. What this means for Russia is that the Baltic Sea is completely controlled by NATO forces, meaning that if Russia wanted to deploy ships in a theoretical sense, they can have them all blocked in the Western Front. So this is a major L on Putin. You know, I'm emoting on him right now. Like that's kind of a failure. So lastly, I'm gonna ask the big question. Can Trump win the election? So according to the polls, yes. So if you look at all the recent polls for 2024, Trump has a major lead in most of the states. According to a recent poll on March 15th, he has a 2% lead. So in Florida, he has a lead, Ohio, Michigan, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, basically every state. The only two states he doesn't have a lead in is Minnesota, which is a 4% Biden lead, and then California, which is a 24% Biden lead. New York is 12% for Biden, Washington is 16% for Biden, Maryland is 22% for Biden, Colorado is 7% for Biden, Massachusetts is 20% for Biden, Virginia is 6% for Biden, Illinois is 9% for Biden, and New Mexico is 8% for Biden. But besides that, most states are for Trump. The state that is the highest for Trump would be Wyoming with 53%. The state that's highest for Biden is obviously California. What else would you be expecting? But these are the latest polls according to 270 to win. Now, not to be an asshole to Joe Biden, I bet he's trying his hardest to keep the economy afloat, but under his presidency, we've had the highest inflation rate since. Now, obviously COVID was 2020 and we were recovering in 2021, so I won't hold that against him, right? Even though we were pretty high in inflation, but right between 2021 to 2022, it just started climbing randomly. Um, This is according to Statista. The highest inflation rate was 9% in June of 2022. But nowadays, it's about 3.2%, which if we look at the, gra the graph, right, 3.2% is higher than we were in February of 2020. So what this means is that during COVID, we had less inflation than we do after COVID, which is insane to think about. Now, this is a difference of four years, February 2020, February 2024. So you can obviously that the Biden presidency has f***ed up the economy, no matter what way you look at it. Like, sure, he's created more jobs, but that's just people going back to work after COVID. So that statistic doesn't make sense. Inflation is still really high. And the last reason why people probably won't vote for Biden is just because of how stupid he is. He can't even complete full sentences. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was put him in the foothills of the Himalayas with Xi Jinping, traveling with him. I guess he traveled 17,000 miles on his vice president. I don't know that for a fact. He mispronounced Lincoln Riley's name. Lincoln! Lincoln Riley! Like, who the f is gonna vote for this guy? I don't know. But. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching, guys. Those are the 10 most important news stories from the week, and I hope you enjoyed. If you liked this video, then subscribe, like, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching, guys.